Hi all, today we will talk about a new feature that comes with the Blink terminal and that is Blink code. As we can see here in the official documentation of the Blink code, they have integrated Visual Studio code into the Blink shell and with that it will allow us to edit either local files or we can edit also remote files. We can see here we have the option to edit anything on our local file system on the iPad. We can also edit remote projects by using the host and the path to the project and we can also code in the cloud by using git pods. Also we have the option to code from github repository by opening a remote repository. Today the goal of the video is to get you through all these features and understand what we can and cannot do and how it's best to use Blink code inside Blink shell. First of all it's worth mentioning that downloading the application is free but using it with the full set of features it isn't. You would need to pay an annual fee of I think $21.99 euros or dollars depending where you are from. I don't think it's an expensive application because it's less than two euros or two dollars per year and if you want to edit code remotely it can greatly help. One thing to remember before we go deeper into the features of Blink code and how to use Blink code is that you cannot run projects. So you cannot run a web application or a complex application application. If you use ISH, you may be able to run Python scripts, so you would need another application for that, not inside Blink. But if you want to use Blink code to just edit files, that is actually possible. If you want to run complex projects from your iPad, I will link in the description of this video another video I have made on how to create and run complex applications using iPad Pro and Raspberry Pi. Now let's come back and focus on the Blink code. The first thing to remember is that we need to install an extension so that we are able to access the file system. To do that, let's just run code. Two things to note here. One is that if you log in with your GitHub account and you set sync settings to on, then you are able to use the exact same settings as you used in your Visual Studio code, of course, in case you did the same thing there so that you can have your settings synchronized. That's a very cool feature that you can use. Now we need to install an extension which is called BlinkFS. As you can see, I have it already installed. So what this will do, it will allow you to access files on your iOS device or remotely. So this is very important and is the first step to do before doing anything else. Using command W we can come out of the editor. Let's focus on the second feature and that is connect to a local folder. If I open my file system I created here a dev folder. Now in order to be able to access this dev folder I need to connect it to my blink shell. In order to do that we need to run link files command. Once we run this we are presented with a list of files and folders so I'm gonna click on dev and I'm gonna click on done I don't have to do that because I have it already there go ahead and link whatever folders you need there now if I'm gonna list all the folders you see now I have dev here linked to my blink now if I'm gonna say code dev we can see that our dev folder is open in here. And of course, here we can add files. So let's say I want to add a file here. Let's say I'm gonna call this test.txt. And here I can write whatever I want, test. Save it, of course. If I go to my file system, open dev folder, I see test file right here. So this is indeed a very nice feature, as I said, to work with local files. If I want to edit files, if you have some shell scripts, if you have some other type of files, text 
files and all other types you can use VS Code for that I think it's a really cool feature and now that we have seen that we can move to the third point of the video and that is connect remotely to github so if I want to edit a github repository I will go here to open repository same I can also go on the left bottom corner here and say open remote repository I can open a repository from github let's say I will choose the interviews one the one that we use for our interviews course and as you can see I have it here open in front of me if I take a java file that I created I can edit it I can also edit Python files once again as I said we cannot run them we don't have a terminal here we cannot do anything for that but we can definitely edit commit them back to github those are things we can definitely do as you can see I have the same theme that I have everywhere on my Visual Studio Code because I use the synchronization option and as I said we cannot run as you can see I can open it cannot do anything about it I cannot run it if I open my code server though which is the code server that runs on my raspberry pi now that is a different discussion here i can open a folder let's say i open again the interviews folder that i just had it sits locally on my raspberry pi so if i go to the link list test here i can run these files i can run all these projects here there is not a problem with that i can also run python here because i have a terminal so if i'm gonna go here and i'm say terminal new terminal I can run things here but going back to blink once again we see that we can also connect remotely to any github repository let's close it and the fourth feature that I want to discuss in this video is how to connect to a remote location so you can connect to a remote server let's say you have a code server remotely somewhere on a server or you have something in the cloud some code in the cloud you can definitely connect to it by using a URL in my case I'm gonna connect remotely to my Raspberry Pi and in order to do that I have to configure my Raspberry Pi as a known host to Blink. To do that I'm gonna type here config and under hosts I created my Raspberry Pi host. We have the alias you can put here whatever you want raspberrypi.local is the host name on port 22 because I want to connect via SSH with user Pi and your password that you can connect to Raspberry Pi. Once again if you want to have that working with your iPad video is done below in the description it will get you step by step through the whole configuration so that you're able to do that if you want to connect to a different host just put here the host address the port that you want to connect to the username and the password click save and everything should work now let's say I want to edit again the interviews project that sits on my Raspberry Pi to do that I'm gonna type code Raspberry Pi which is my host alias that we just saw and under here we have have home by dev interviews this is where I put my folder interviews I'm gonna click enter and there you go we have our project open here even if the folder I open comes from Raspberry Pi I still cannot run it there is nothing I can do to run it I can modify it though but I cannot run so these are some cool features that blink code can do as you can see we can have visual studio code inside the blink application which is great for me personally i'm gonna continue using code server with raspberry pi because i want to also run projects when i code from my ipad but in case i have certain files on my file system that i want to edit like md files or any other type of rich text files that i want to work with this is a great way to edit them because it allows me to use my Visual Studio code that I'm extremely familiar with I have my shortcuts I have everything here and it works extremely well with the external keyboard so remember that a few months back I did a video in which I showed all the ways that you can code from your iPad the plus and the minuses for each way we can add a fourth way there and that is using blink terminal I hope this video helped you or at least gave you a view into how to do things with blink there is also the official documentation here I must say it's not extremely complete because it doesn't go in detail through how to do things for either connecting remotely or connecting to a folder inside your iPad OS but it's a good reference to just have a look and see what you can do with the blink shell and blink code and if you find this video helpful and if you enjoyed and 
and you are now able to work with Blink Shell, please take a moment to leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can benefit from this tutorial. Also, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button to receive notifications when the next video will be released. We will go back to our algorithm scores. I just wanted to make this quick video here because a friend of mine recommended and told me that now we are able to use Visual Studio Code with Blink and from next week on we go back to the algorithm scores as usual. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.